asking for money? It's yeah. just like a friendly compliment. We have, yeah. She's find the most. Do you ever find any? Yes. Really? That is crazy. I found 300. What? Hey, Bubble Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. All right, Bolo Buddies, are you ready to hit the bends? Super excited, loving this, and we are going to see what we can find today. I will tell you it starts out a little slow, but I am going to leave in some of this footage in case I missed something because there have been a few videos where you guys have pointed out things that I should have picked up. So I want your input during the video. At the beginning of the video, you saw some footage of, um, that was uncut footage. We were digging through the purses and scarves and hats, accessories, stuff like that, bags. And a lot of people were looking inside of the bags. And you heard the one lady say that they have a friendly competition. So her and some of the other gals, when they go up there, they see who can find the most money. And a lot of them just find change and stuff like that. But the one gal said she found $300 once. So I put it out there to some of them that were digging. And I'm like, well, how does that work? What do you guys do? Like if you find money, like, do you turn it in? Is it just finders keepers? Do you have to buy the item that it's in? And one person said, if it's in a pocketbook, I just buy the pocketbook. So that makes sense. But are there rules for finding money at the bins? Like, what are the rules? Does anybody know? Let me know in the comments what you do if you find money in the bins. So I can't wait to see what you guys all put. I thought that would be a great opening to this video to kind of get some discussion going um, going on because I know everybody's going to probably have either, it's either going to be like a bunch of people with the same opinion or a bunch of different opinions. So I'm kind of new to the bins, only been going there probably for about a year. And I went a few times and then I didn't go back for a long time. And now I'm just, I love it. I want to go every week. So can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. And let's keep digging here. All right, so like I said, kind of a slow start at the beginning. I found that dragon looking thing at the beginning, but it was missing a wing and one of its heads. I definitely would have picked it up if it would have been complete because you guys know if you watch my channel, I absolutely love toys. And I hit a garage sale before I came here and it was a really good garage sale, so stay tuned for that video. I'm not sure which one I'm going to post first, but definitely look for that because it was a super score in my opinion. And then after I left here, I went to a church sale, which was, oh my goodness, amazing. So those videos are going to be coming soon. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and turn on bell notifications so that you get alerts when I post new videos got lots of fun content coming your way. So again, I like the hard goods. I don't really venture over into the clothes too much. That's not really my thing. If you're looking um, to learn more about clothing items that you can find at the bins, definitely go over and check out Dad Planet. Um, he has a great channel and he is local to the same area as me. So we do a lot of collaboration videos where we have a challenge and we see who has the best haul. So you can stay tuned for those types of videos as well. I did put that in my cart along with another one and I ended up looking up comps and they just didn't comp out high enough so I threw them back. You will see me put a lot of items in my cart that I end up throwing back. The reason I'm looking at those is tampons and pads that are vintage can be a big money bolo. A lot of times uh, TV shows and stuff like that want those items to be in the movies and then I also feel like maybe sometimes people want them for like 
maybe it's their favorite and they can't find them anymore. Maybe not for the really old ones, but maybe just something that's discontinued. So it's a good idea to always look up comps. All right, this right here is an Imaginex vehicle. I, I don't know, should I have asked them how much? I probably could have got it for like five bucks, those heavy items, that seems to be like the magic number. But they, somebody told me when I was looking at that, that I think it was uh, one day that week, there was a whole bin that came out and it was full of Imaginex toys. And I guess, I don't know if it was the manager or one of the store employees was like 30 bucks for the whole bin. You guys, if I would have been there, I would have jumped all over that. I totally would have done it. That would have made such a fun video. Um, but I wasn't there. And I don't even know for certain exactly if I, if, that's exactly how it went down, but that's what I was told. So I'm inclined to believe it. So how cool would that have been? I do pick up kids DVDs if they are sealed. Now, actually a viewer of mine just handed me that item. Uh, she knows that I like to sell Fisher Price items and I like to sell toys. So that was really sweet of her. And what's cool about that is I got a video over on my reseller testing Bolo products that shows how it works but I also cleaned it up in a special way with a special product I use, and I made a video about that also. So I ended up using that item in three different videos, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you did see the Paw Patrol item. I pick up Paw Patrol whenever I see it. Uh, typically, it's gonna be a bread and butter item, but people are looking for it. Some of the vehicles, especially like the Sea Patrol, uh, some of the ones that are harder to find can go for more. And I do find one coming up soon that is more of a hard to find item, especially the little uh, character, the figure. And we'll talk about that. This is just a little Mega Bloks Halo figure. I picked up those stickers. I've told you guys before, when I find sealed stickers at the bins, I always grab them, I collect them, and I just hang on to them, and I will list them eventually, probably in small lots, unless they are something special. Some of the vintage sticker sheets can go for big money. This is a PJ Masks uh, vehicle, no uh, character, so just going to be a bread and butter item there. I think that was Baby Einstein. If I can find a bunch of Baby Einstein, like the DVDs or the CDs, I will lot those up. This here, I don't know. You guys let me know if I should have got this. I think it's definitely vintage. So I think that's like if you go to like a picnic or an outside catered event, they will put those nets over the food to keep the flies off of the food. I feel like maybe I should have got that. Was that a missed opportunity? Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, I did pick up this, and this is a bread and butter bolo, but I have sold those before. It's the little purple monkey. There's also a couple other characters that um, are a part of that set. So I always pick those up when I see them. If I have more than one listed, it's really I just change the quantity as long as the condition is the same. I think there's a dog and I can't and a frog maybe, a dog, a frog, and a monkey. I think that's what it is. All right. It rattles too, by the way. Now I did pick these up and I found quite a few of them. I ended up putting them all back. They were, some, I think, magic tricks or something, VHS. So here's an example of an item that I already have listed in my eBay store. Good condition. All I had to do was change the quantity. So I definitely threw the little Mickey Mouse in my cart. These VHS I'm throwing in my cart, but I end up throwing back into the bins. This stuff was here um, the last time I was there. Nobody is grabbing this stuff. I wonder how long they're going to leave it out there. Um, I don't know. I did see somebody that um, they had, I don't know if it was like a funeral home or I feel like it was some type of place like that. And they were picking up like trees. So that was interesting. Okay. Okay. This is a vintage Fisher-Price schoolhouse. I ended up getting that for $2. Uh, all of the things inside of it is what I was really looking to get. Um, the schoolhouse had some damage to it, so I decided to just donate that and sell the accessories inside. 
Now, I did not find all the letters and all of the numbers, but I did find some of them, and you guys, those sold within like 24 hours. They are marked and labeled Fisher-Price, as you saw in the picture. So if you see those, those are definitely a good pickup. Right here, this vehicle is broken. Um, the back part is supposed to clamp up and stay, but it doesn't. But that little minifigure is a hard-to-find figure, so I am selling them separate. I'm going to sell the vehicle broken and sell the figure separate. And we're just going to see what happens. I know I can sell the figure. So it was definitely still a good buy. I did not know it was broken when I was there, but um, probably still would have picked it up. If you pop the front wheel up, it can still be played with just fine. All right. Had a little bunch of stuff all right there at one time. And then you don't find anything for a while. And then you find a bunch of stuff. So the Benz is definitely an interesting, um, it's always interesting. It's so exciting just to see what you're going to find. Let me know down in the comments, what is the best thing you've ever found at the Goodwill Benz? All right. That little train I threw in my cart, that's just going to be lotted up with other trains and stuff. That was a Paw Patrol vehicle. Again, I'm going to pick those up every time. I do have a bunch of characters somewhere in my house uh, that I could have added to those, but um, I didn't want to go digging for them. So I just, some of them I listed with the character if I found it, and if not, I just listed the vehicle separately. And if you don't um, know, on Poshmark, they allow you to bundle and add items into your uh, cart. So that's another great item to you know, have in your cart for bundling on Poshmark. All right, I do find a cool item here. This is here is where we were talking about um, finding money. Uh, there was a North Face backpack that I threw in my cart and then I took it out and I, I kind of looked it over and decided not to get it. This right here is a little coach bag. Rachel Strickland has a video on how to know if coach is real or fake, but she just did one on Louis Vuitton. I think I said that right. Um, and she literally rips these purses apart and shows you every detail of how to know if they are fake or real. So if you guys are interested in getting into higher end, um, like Louis Vuitton and Coach is, and it's super high end, but Coach is faked a lot. Definitely check out those videos of hers because you are going to definitely learn some tips on how to identify whether something is real or fake. And I was actually talking to somebody I was digging with. They asked about a Michael Kors purse, and she doesn't have a video on that, but I definitely referred them over to her channel because she uh, knows her stuff when it comes to knowing if bags are real or fake. I've sent her photos before. I'm like, what do you think about this? So she's really great, and she has an awesome reseller channel. That's not all she does. She's um, a bolo finder and super, super uh, great content on her channel. So I highly recommend her channel. Okay, here, here was where we were talking about the finding money. I just pulled some of the raw footage from here and put it at the beginning. I thought that was super fun um, hearing them talk about that. And I was like, no way. So there is something. Um, so right now I wear like a fanny pack. It's like a really... Um, I hide it under my shirt, but it makes my shirt look lumpy. And I'm like, I have got to do something different here. And look what I find. I find this awesome bag and it goes over my shoulder. And I'm like, I am totally keeping this. I am not wearing this fanny pack. <laughs> oh, so next time you guys see me at the bends, I will be wearing that Land's in little, uh, I think it was Land's in backpack thing. I did pick up this hat. I have had an offer on it. I did not accept the offer. Um, I'm going to wait and see if I can get another offer. I did find two of those. So it is a quantity two, and I definitely think those are going to sell. They've got the vintage advertising on them. This one right here, I wish I would have gotten this one now. But I, if I remember correctly, it had some damage or something. There was a reason I put it back down. But I think that might have been a radio station. So this one says Hearts and Wendy's and Big Bear. So just some vintage advertising. Super cool. And again, yeah, that one I think was a little damaged. But maybe I should have got it. I don't know. 
they're cool, fun uh, hats, you know, that people can wear in the winter. All right, so the reason I was telling you the fanny pack story, we'll get to that. This one, I think, also was damaged, but look how cool that Secret Santa um, patch is. That was cool. And we were doing a lot of talking here, me and some of the ladies. We were chit-chatting about the stuff we were finding. I know a lot of people say that their bins, people are aggressive and mean, and oh my goodness, everybody has been so awesome that I have met, and it's just been really, really fun shopping with people. I did put this in my cart, but there's the fanny pack. Wait until you see this. Look, it's Michelle Obama. She threw it over to me like, here you go. Here's a fanny pack. <laughs> I did not buy the fanny pack. But yeah, we were trying to figure out um, what was going on there. Like, how funny is that? Would you have bought the fanny pack? Maybe I should have bought it to sell. I don't know. Here's another fanny pack. It was like fanny pack city. <laughs> So the reason I like a fanny pack is because I can be hands-free. So I don't have to worry about a purse and, you know, it's just easy. This right here, I think came as like a subscription box type deal. Um, it was in nice condition. I, maybe I should have gotten it. I don't know. But I've heard people say that sometimes you can get Vero's for stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I think that was Panama Jack. I did put that in my card. I think I looked up comps. I don't think I could find anything really comparable to it. So I ended up throwing it back in. What would you guys have done? Would you guys have grabbed the Panama Jack hat? I've done pretty good with uh, some straw hats. I learned about those from Butterfly Hustles, her YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, checked her out, definitely sub her up. But she would talk about straw. I think it's raffia. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Hats. And after I saw it on her channel, I started finding them everywhere. And I have made so much money off of those hats, but I didn't know. So I definitely learned that from her. She gets all the credit. This thing right here is a bolo. Um, unfortunately, when I powered it on, I couldn't get the vibration mode to stay on. It would like come on and then shut off. So maybe I didn't charge it long enough. I don't know. But I'm just going to sell the accessories. I figured... Um, I can make my money back doing that. And it is what it is. I was kind of excited, honestly, when I found it. I was like, yes, it had everything in there. It looks like it has never been used and womp womp, didn't work. So, all right. I thought I was going to have like a really great thumbnail for the video, but nope. I think they retail for um, 70 to 150, depending on which model you find. And I could not find any listed on eBay, which is really weird. I did find another Paw Patrol coming up here. And this is my total. This is what I spent, $22.35. How did I do? Be sure to check out the description of the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.